Welcome to In the Blue Corner. We're in Las Vegas uh, with uh, a bunch of, you know, boxing royalty. Uh, this time around, we have uh, Freddie Roach, seven-time trainer of the year, along with uh, Paul Malinaji, Jaime Mota here with you. Freddie, uh, thank you for being here with us. Uh, you know, great to talk, you know, all things boxing with you. But I think, you know, obviously one of the things that... Uh, most people know you about is, is the time that you've been with Manny Pacquiao, Manny uh, retiring and now running for president. How do you feel about, you know, a Manny that came into your gym as a complete unknown, you know, became a uh, division champion in four different divisions and now he's running for president of the Philippines? Yeah, uh, you know, Manny's a re really good guy and he's always been really nice and he's always cared about the people of his country and that's why uh you know he's a, he, he's going to retire because his family doesn't want to, you know they, they've seen enough and uh, so he's going to re retire and uh he he's a, a senator right now but he's going to run, run for, for president and uh you know he's a good guy and he wants to do the best he can for his country so when, when is the election funny the election will start in about two months Oh, right oh so it's he's right. campaigning now. Then. Yeah. Yes, he's campaigning now, and they're talking about me going over and helping him campaign in a little bit. Of course, bro. You got, <laughs> I mean, are you going to move to to the Philippines in your retirement? <laughs> no, but I'm the third most popular person in the Philippines. <laughs> it's, it's Manny, but who's number two? The yeah, president, president now. Oh, the uh, Duterte. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. but but if you campaign for Manny, you may supersede Duterte. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. That's gonna go all the way. You'll be you'll be his campaign manager, and then and maybe like, even yeah. you're so popular, they might even ask you to be the vice president. <laughs> um, we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say that's why I, uh, if, if in a in a, in a in a land where Manny Pacquiao was president, I mean, I would think you would be royalty if you were, went there in your retirement. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the Philippines is a very nice place and different areas, uh, just like, you know, you have three different regions. And, and uh, just being able to see a different world like that, it just was, it was really nice. And I've been everywhere in the Philippines from, you know, the... Pagiao up north where it snows and uh, wow, I didn't they, even know it snows. they don't have tricycles up there because the hills are too steep. Wow. Uh, so, so did you did you ever imagine yourself when Manny walked into the gym that this would be the ride you'd go on with this guy? You know, uh, like, think, yeah. think back to the, the day he walked into the gym and yeah. you know that you, you were approached by him or however that that marriage started. Would you ever have imagined? the ride that this this guy was going to take you on, that that was going to be the guy, despite all the other champions you've worked with uh, before and after. Never, never, never thought of that, actually, because he, he walks in the gym with his man, a couple of his man, managers, and uh, he's uh, he says, I hear you, you're good on, on the mids. He hears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he wanted, I said, you want, you want to go around? And he said, he said, yeah, then after one round, he says, we might have a new trip new trainer here and uh, I said well this, this kid can fight and uh, he was a real good fighter and it's kind of funny because uh, two weeks before that you know I had someone come in the gym that was un unexpected and you know someone asked me why did you build a gym I said well you never know when the next Muhammad Ali is going to walk through your doors and then uh, Two days later, Muhammad Ali walks through my doors and he asked me to be... Manny Pacquiao. No. Oh, it's really Muhammad Ali. Uh, the real, the yeah. real Muhammad Ali. Oh, okay. He's the real one. And he says, can I train here? Muhammad uh, Ali. <laughs> I'm sitting there by myself and like, I says, is this real? Like, <laughs> you so, never know when Muhammad Ali's going to walk through your doors. I, Muhammad Ali walking through your doors. I told him where the dressing room was and then uh, I, started I started to call people on the phone and I said, no, no. I put the phone down. I said, "Don't ruin this," you know. So then, whoever showed up that day had the best day ever, because being in the gym with Muhammad Ali for six hours was unbelievable. The magic tricks and just yeah. just playing jokes on us all and hitting the bags, working out. Just so the whole thing was great. And then, you know, I, you know, I said, "This is why I built the gym." 
He said, no, I got Muhammad Ali in my gym here. I mean, obviously, the location said, is unbelievable. But, but then the next Muhammad Ali was was two weeks later, Manny Pacquiao. Ooh. Oh, wow, so they came in two weeks apart. <laughs> he, he, they came in two weeks apart. So this and, was 2001, 2001? Uh, yes, right around there. Yeah. I remember when I saw Manny fight Laduaba. Yes. Um, I remember watching the paper. I was getting ready for my pro debut, which was like two weeks later, and it was the De La Hoya Castillejo card, right? Yes. And I remember... Um, I was watching the pay-per-view with my uncle Manny. That's his name's Manny. So I remember seeing uh, Laduaba, and I remember saying, I saw this guy like six months ago telling my uncle, he's pretty good, Laduaba. Yes. This guy can fight. And yes. and I never heard of this guy, Manny Pacquiao, and my uncle's like, well, his name's Manny. You know, I'm going to root for him. <laughs> so, so, Smart and, man. And then we were like, wow. It's like, you know, he blew uh, away Laduaba, and the rest is history. Right. Uh, because Ludwaba was, uh, you know, he was feared for a lot of guys. Because I, I know. He was very uh, capable. Yes, and uh, crafty guy. I, I, I was trying to get the top rank guys to get, get, get me to make, make a couple of bets on Pacquiao to beat this guy. He said, "Freddie, your guy's gonna get killed." I said, "No, no, he's not." He, I said, "He, he's like a little special. He's." He's just a little special. <laughs> I said, he can fight. I said, do, 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 he can fight. I said, let's, let's make some money. And they just all laughing at me and stuff. But then I had the last laugh. Oh, yeah, this uh, spunky you, you, guy with you the mushroom haircut. Yeah. I stood with a spunky guy with a mushroom yeah. haircut walking into a, a Eye of the Tiger, I think, right? Did you walk into yeah. Eye of the Tiger? <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been laughing, you know, over everybody for <laughs> a couple decades now, uh, thanks sure. to Manny. Uh, you know, we're going to take a little break, talk a little bit more Manny. And, and how things change for you, you know, um, as a person, as a trainer uh, with Manny. Uh, so stick around. We'll be right back here with uh, Freddie Roach in the Blue Corner. In the Blue Corner is sponsored by RhinoFit. Built for the fitness industry, RhinoFit is a powerful member management software designed for martial arts studios, gyms, and trainers. RhinoFit packs a punch with all the features that you need to manage your dojo smoothly and efficiently so that you can save time and money at your business, easily manage your members' payments, track your members' belt rankings and workouts, and monitor the finances of your dojo all from one easy-to-use platform. Feel the power of the Rhino at your fingertips. The RhinoFit platform is available on all of your internet-based devices, including desktop, tablet, and mobile. Set up your free trial account today by going to rhinofit.ca. Welcome back. We're here with uh, Freddie Roach in the blue corner. If you've missed any part of uh, this podcast or any other podcast, you can go to inthebluecorner.podcast. And also, if you want to send us all of your boxing content, you can send it to us as well at inthebluecorner.podcast. Now, we're talking about how, you know, uh, Manny walked into your gym uh, two weeks after... Uh, Muhammad Ali walked in there, but what did you think of Manny when he first walked in? What what did you think, you know, what type of fighter was he, and where did you think that he was actually going to be able to, to get to in boxing? You know, um, after we did the, the round of the mitts, uh, his speed and power were, were very, very good, and uh, you know, he, he had a lot of both, and I, did, uh, I never really seen... A fighter that had both, you know, and he came in the gym, and and then he started working out every day, and then uh, we get uh, Ladwaba was all of a sudden his opponent fell out, the number one contender, and Manny was the next available opponent, and they asked, him, "Do you want to fight?" Uh, yeah, of course, you know, Manny Pacquiao in this fight, and I really believe that he could win that fight. And I know, so Freddie uh, Ladwaba was like. Uh, he was a killer, you know? Yeah, he was good, but also the opportunity to be on the De La Hoya card at that time. That was monstrous uh, visibility, you know, for yes. a guy who, who came to the United States just looking to find the trainer and, you know, yeah. looking to get some visibility. He ends up right on the spotlight uh, on yeah. a De La Hoya card. To be in a De La Hoya card in 2001, you're basically in the spotlight. Yeah, because, you know, he started on the East Coast and came West, and he got turned down by everybody along so the way. So Manny was in the East Coast first? Oh, yes. Wow, I had no idea. No, yeah, yeah. I would have figured coming from Asia, they start on the West Coast first. Yeah. Right, exactly. I mean, don't get me wrong, we got an Asian population yeah. on the East Coast, but I always figure uh, they come from, the, a lot of people start out West like, first. Like the day, the day before he came to my gym, he was with Bob Arum, and Bob Arum turned him, turned him down also. Wow. I mean, Bob turned him down? They all, every, everybody along the way turned him down. And I said, why are they turning this kid down? 
And like people are saying, he's too light, he's too small, and you're not gonna make no money with him and so forth. But like I says, yeah, but th this kid really can fight. I say, you know, he has speed, power, he puts it, puts it together where we start, we start working on combinations and footwork and so forth. And uh, we're, you know, getting along very well, get, working with each other. And then Manny told me, like, like, you know, Freddie, I have to go home and take care of my kids and stuff like that. So I, I, I got to go pretty soon. But then the little Wadawe offer came up and that changed everything for us. Now, before the Ladwama offer came up, was he planning on returning to you uh, for the next training camp or was or did he just enjoy the pad work and then it was going to be uh, maybe I'll be back, maybe I won't be? Yeah, that I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, did, we never had to find out, did we? <laughs> we, we yeah, we, did, we didn't have a, a contract, but, but he did get, we did get along very well and his people, uh, his managers and everyone liked, liked him being in the, in, in the gym. So, uh, I, I thought for sure that, it, that he would be back, but you, you never know. The Ladwaba success yes. secured the fact that he'd be back. Yeah. Well, Manny was known uh, also as the Mexican killer, you know. Um, he, his trilogy with uh, Morales, you know, he, he fought Barrera and then the four fights with Juan Manuel Marquez. But do you think the Barrera fights are the ones that really cemented Manny as one of the, the big time fighters that everybody knew him from then on? I believe so, yeah. When he fought Barrera, he was a pound for pound best fighter in the world at that time. And we fought in Texas, and uh, it was it was just a good day. It was just like, you know, sometimes uh, everything just seems to go seems to go our way, you know? So we're, we get to the, the weigh-in a little bit early. And there's a pool table there, and Mandy likes to play pool. Yeah, I've heard. And then uh, he sets up a shot where he's gonna shoot one ball and knock nine balls in in holes. He's that good. He well, I didn't know he's that good yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Mandy became a hustler too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, pool. so he he made the shot. All the, the nine, all nine balls went in. And I says, oh, geez, I, I went over and called my bookie up and said, hey, <laughs> can we get some money on this fight? <laughs> I didn't know, because everything was, everything was going perfectly. You know? Absolutely. It was just going our way. <laughs> well, the thing, also, a, a great fighter is also known for his rivalries. You know, how important was it to, for Manny to have had guys like um, Morales, Barrera, and and, uh, and Marquez around in his generation to ha create these monstrous rivalries to be remembered for. Yeah, I mean that, that's what that's what made him a superstar, no doubt about that. Beating those those guys, and I remember when they when they tried to call him on TV the Mexican assassin, and he would have no part of that. He says, if it wasn't for the Mexicans, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. I mean, because all the Mexican opponents were like super popular, super, super, good. super popular and super good, and he was beating them all. And uh, but he he he's afraid. He, don't let them call me the Mexican assassin. He said, <laughs> yeah. I, don't worry about it. We, <laughs> well, I I remember the first Juan Manuel Marquez fight, which ended in a draw. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll I'll tell you guys something. One of the Last times that I actually bet on a fight was that fight. And I bet on the draw just for wow. uh, on a whim. Uh, and, and I won on that one. But I remember, um, you know, and also with, with Morales, uh, you know, Morales used to like to wear winning gloves. And for the first fight, Manny yeah. wore winning gloves. And I remember you saying, had we wore Reyes, Reyes we would have knocked him out. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I remember about the Morales fight. I remember Boo Boy after the fight crying, like 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 the end of the world. Have I'm like, I mean, I feel like he's gonna be back. I remember thinking like he's already like established, like it's not over. I remember seeing Boo Boy in the in the ring crying, like as if like that it, it was, was the end of a career. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why is he crying? I'm like, I'm, this guy's gonna be back. <laughs> it's yeah. like, <laughs> so it, it's funny because uh, Boo Boy is a very emotional person, and when we're, we're, we're fighting. Uh, um, uh, the uh, Puerto, Puerto Rican fighter, um, Cotto? Cotto, mm -hmm. yeah, and Cotto, uh, is, has Manny on the ropes, and I look over at Boo Boy, and he's crying, and I said, Boo Boy, what's wrong? He says, 
he's laying on the ropes and you told him not to. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, I said, no, no, fights evolve in different I, ways. I said, so don't worry about it. We'll take care of it between us. So the, the bell rings, Manny comes over and he says, Manny, I said, why are you staying on the ropes? He said, I want to see how hard he hits. I said, I said, does he hit hard? He says, I can take his punch. I said, okay, the, if you can take his punch, the fight's over this round. <laughs> they stay, well, stay and, off the ropes. And, and <laughs> that was one of the biggest knockouts of, of Manny's career mm -hmm. when he knocked out uh, Cotto. I mean, that and Ricky Hatton, yeah. which, I mean, I don't think Ricky has woken up from that that punch yeah, yet. I mean, that, that, that was I absolutely that was brutal. Year, right? Yeah, that, that was absolutely knockout. incredible. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a little break here with uh, Freddie Roach, and we'll be right back. More Freddie Roach when we come back here in the Blue Corner. In the Blue Corner is sponsored by RhinoFit. Built for the fitness industry, RhinoFit is a powerful member management software designed for martial arts studios, gyms, and trainers. RhinoFit packs a punch with all the features that you need to manage your dojo smoothly and efficiently so that you can save time and money at your business. Easily manage your members' payments, track your members' belt rankings and workouts, and monitor the finances of your dojo all from one easy-to-use platform. Feel the power of the Rhino at your fingertips. The RhinoFit platform is available on all of your internet-based devices, including desktop, tablet, and mobile. Set up your free trial account today by going to rhinofit.ca. Welcome back. We're in the blue corner with uh, seven-time trainer of the year, Freddie Roach, uh, Pauli Malinaji, Jaime Mota here with you. And, you know, we've been talking about Manny Pacquiao, but how did he change your life as a trainer? Uh, from then on, I, I assume, you know, there were a lot of fighters that wanted to work with you because of what you accomplished with Manny. Yes, yeah, true. But the thing, the thing is, like, Manny, um, like, I got to a point where I was really satisfied with him. And then I said to myself, you know what? My job is not just to be satisfied. My job is to make him a better fighter. So we start working on the footwork a lot the more. Right and we start working on the right hook. And every day we go jab, uppercut, hook, over and over and over again. Just get, you know, the more he throws us, the more he's going to get used to it. And he hadn't knocked anyone out with his... Uh, right hand yet. It was, uh, he knocked everyone out yeah, with, with, the left, left hand, yeah. with the left hand. And uh, then we were going into a fight, and uh, um, I believe it was the one that you just mentioned. Uh, Ricky Hatton? Uh, Ricky well, Hatton. Yeah. <laughs> and Manny all of a sudden throws his right hook for the first time. That's when he dropped him. And that's when he dropped him. Yeah. You know? And then I was more satisfied then, and I was. Ma I was making him a better fighter in the, the footwork, the hooks, the both hands, using both hands. It worked out really well. And then, you know, once he became a two-fisted fighter, it changed, it really changed everything for us. Uh, you know, uh, Manny, obviously one of the best fighters uh, in the world, all time, I, I would think. Uh, but like I said, other fighters that you've been able to take on. And coming up, you're going to be uh, having Gabe Rosado fight Jaime Munhia. How do you see that fight between Rosado, who lately, I mean, he had a, a spectacular knockout, and, and he faces uh, Jaime Munhia? You know, it's, it's a tough fight, it's, uh, but it's a, it's a good fight because I like when the best fight the best. I mean, I, I think that's what boxing is all about. And uh, he's... Uh, He's training really hard for that fight. He's got great sparring partners. Uh, he's been sparring now for four weeks with Benavides. And, you know, Benavides is a big, strong guy. Yeah. And uh, then he sparred with Benavides' older brother, who's making the comeback and fighting on the, the same show as with his brother. And, uh, you know, because I remember when, when the, the Benavides were talking with David, I remember when he used to just sit there and eat Cheetos every yeah. day. Jose was the guy <laughs> yeah. everybody looked at. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but he was, uh, he became a great fighter, though. Mm -hmm. All, you know, just uh, something clicked somewhere, and mm -hmm. he get, he get, he get up, he get up yeah. off the floor and started working out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so, uh, you know, he's been working as our main sparring partner. 
I mean, they, they've gone 12 rounds at least eight times in the past month. And uh, um, now I, I stopped that boxing happen because it was just too, it was too much for both fighters, actually. You leave and, it in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Which is which is the, can happen at wild card gym. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's known for the great gym rivalries and great gym wars. Yes, it can happen. I sparred yeah. out both Benavides brothers back yeah. when I was there. Wow. So um, you know everyone's uh, everyone's in, uh, in shape and ready to go. And we, we, once we get back home, uh, we have to, just to finish the punch with with, with with Gabe with that with that show. And uh, I really like him in the fight, though, uh, you know, because the, the fight before, when he got knocked down in this, the first round, and, you know, I said to myself, is he really hurt that bad? You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, still, I'm looking at him, looking at him, and then finally I get to look back at me, he smiles at me, and uh, I, I knew he was good, but the thing is, he wasn't hurt that bad, so then he gets up, and the guy walks in to finish him and gets caught with the right hand and he finished him. Yep. Uh, yep. So, I mean, that was like one big of the... Big right hand. Big right big hand. Right hand. Yeah. I mean, so, he fell face first. So, um, our, our game plan for the fight coming up with Mongia is very similar to that to our last fight. We, we want to exchange with him. We, you know, we're not afraid of his punching power and... Uh, um, and Gabe is a Philadelphia fighter, so he, he, he enjoys that kind of thing. He's a Philly <laughs> fighter, and he, and he he knows that well, mm -hmm. like because the Philly it fighters comes from that, that culture, they, they they have that culture. I'm not sure if we're taking them that away from them sometimes because we have so many wars in my gym. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but we But I don't know, man. Yeah, having been yeah. in your gym, having having come up in different gyms, I, I think you know, there's a place for gym wars. I, I think it puts you in a psychological state where you're ready to battle. You know, I, I, I know too many of them are no good, everybody says, but I don't regret any of the, the type, gym war type sparrings that I had because I feel like they made me better and I feel like they would put me in a mindset to get ready to fight and, yeah. and Wildcard was a great place for, for sparring when I was there. It was one it was one of the reasons my career got resurrected at that time, you know. Wow, it, it's, you know, uh, so many great fighters. You know, we're, we're here in Vegas, too. You know, it's uh, at the time that, that we're recording this. It's uh, uh, Canelo, Caleb Plant. Uh, who do you think can beat Canelo, uh, whether it's now or, or in the future? Who's the fighter that can beat Canelo? And do you think Caleb has a shot? Um, yeah. You know, he, uh, Plant's a good boxer, and... Uh, I don't think they should underestimate him at all, but Canelo's a better puncher, of course, and then, uh, you know, I, I think the, the most dangerous fight for him after this is probably Benavides. Because Benavides, is, he's, he's becoming a really, really solid fighter. Man, and that's for La Raza, too, man. That's, that's <laughs> yes. Mexican versus Mexican, too. <laughs> that's a big one. You, you think that Benavides um, is more of a danger to Canelo than Charlo? Yes. Why? Um, I'm not. I'm not the hugest fan on Char the Ch Charlo. Um, I know he's a good fighter here, but um, I, I think Benavides is a better fighter though. I, I, for me, it's it's 50-50. But I'll tell you what, boxing is a business, and I'm not gonna. I don't want to look past Caleb. Ironically, Caleb and Benavides were on the verge of fighting each other before That's all right. this yeah. happened. They, they fell, were talking a lot through. of uh, garbage to each other and then talking a lot of trash. But I think the Benavides fight is the one that gets made with Canelo if he gets by this one because it's, it's a more sellable fight. So I think either way, Freddie gets his wish. If, 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 if we get past, uh, if Canelo gets past uh, uh, Caleb and, uh, hmm. and uh, we get to see uh, that fight next. Uh, I think that, that would be you know, an, an incredible fight to see uh, as you know, uh, all the time that you were able to be together with, with Manny Pacquiao and all the great memories that you guys uh, uh, gave us. And thank you so much for having uh, been here with us, Freddie. Uh, and Freddie. honor and And great. honestly, Freddie, I feel like I, I just got like scraped the tip of the iceberg, man. I feel like this oh, conversation oh, oh, could have oh, went on could, an hour. Oh, we I got so many things like I didn't get to talk hours. about. <laughs> we could have gone to You know, we'll have him back. <laughs> we'll have him back. And, and, and we'll be able to talk a lot more uh, with Freddie Roach. Uh, so, yeah, you know, that's my boss. That, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Time's we'll, a ticking. We'll, Time's we'll, a ticking. We'll, we'll have to ask her, you know, when we can have uh, Freddie back. But I'm, I'm sure she'll she'll lend them to us, you know, uh, here sometime soon. So thanks for being here with us for Freddie Roach.
Paul Malinaji, I'm Jaime Mota. Thank you. We'll see you again in the Blue Corner.